But right now, I want to welcome a terrific friend. He was a 2004 NFL number one draft pick from the Chicago Bears, Mr. Tommy Harris. How are you, Tommy? How you doing, Tommy? <laughs> Tommy and Tommy. Yes, sir. It's uh, it's wonderful to have you on the show Great today. To uh, watching you on the field uh, in the NFL, you played so many years. You you gave everything to your sport. Uh, you were a, just a monster of a man. And I'm you come you came in today. Uh, you've had some life changing experiences that happened, you know. And and we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, losing your wife and how that affected your your NFL career, and then well, you've gone on to just do some fantastic things. So let's welcome Tommy Harris. Thank you so much. And uh, Tommy, tell me about your battle to even make it to the NFL and, and what you had to do to prepare yourself for that. Well, mentally, uh, growing up in Killeen, Texas, you know, right down the street. Oh, yeah. Um, Local. <clears throat> getting out of there was kind of difficult, uh, but I first learned that I had to – find a focus, right, and you get yourself a nice focus and you dedicate that, and then you have a faith, a strong faith. Without my faith, you know, I talk about my faith all the time. And then I learned how to finish. That means complete whatever I put my mind to. And I say those three things were the the things that really helped me uh, get to the next level, and I kept those three, um, uh, my faith, my, my finish, and I, you you know, um, into that's why I love to see athletes also get into business because their work ethic, their faith, they're committed. They know how to finish and make it happen. And you've, you know, since your NFL career, you've you've built multiple companies. You're doing some neat things today. We're going to also talk uh, talk about. Um, I do want to ask you uh, because you needed faith. You played in the NFL how many years? Nine years, and uh, and then um, you dramatically lost your wife. Yes, uh, that's why I retired after uh, my last year in San Diego. Uh, I remember playing for the uh, Chargers, and I the day before we were about to play the Oakland Raiders, I called my wife. I said, "Well, she wasn't my wife then, but I said uh, we need to get married after the Raiders game." She's like, why? Why you say that? Why so soon? Or why so? I said, I don't know. I just felt like it's right for us to get married. So right after we played Oakland, the last game in San Diego, uh, we got married that night. And 41 days from there, my wife passed away. And I have two kids. And from from there, it was a no-brainer. I, I could no longer go back to the game. And that's where the helmet came off, and the business cap came on. Yeah. So. Um, what was it like to, I mean, to go ahead, make that decision? I know mentally it, I couldn't imagine what you were going through. Uh, did the NFL support you in, in those decisions and not being able to go back and play? Yeah, they supported me. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't much. It, it's an awkward moment, you know. They don't really have much to say or they're not rushing you back. And mm -hmm. I made a a conscious decision to know that it wouldn't benefit anyone if I was in their locker room. I mentally was not into it yeah. anymore. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Tommy. Listen, we got to take a break right now. We're going to be right back with Tommy Harris, NFL superstar, now business speaker. He's uh, doing some amazing things in the world today, and we're going to kind of talk about that and, and where he's taking his life and, and how he's helping other people get through their tough times. We'll be right back with CEO Money. Okay, we're back with CEO Money and NFL superstar Tommy Harris. Welcome back, Tommy. What's up, man? <laughs> So Tommy, uh, in the for the break, was kind of taking us through um, what it was like uh, his last days in the NFL, and uh, I want to now kind of talk about the change that happened in your life and how dramatic that was. Uh, you've gotten involved in multiple businesses. You put your business hat on, and uh, but something that is even more inspiring, and and I think it lends itself to business as well. 
um, was what you went through. Your story was, I mean, everyone was talking about it. You actually, you were on Oprah mm-hmm. uh, and many, many talk shows. Tell me about uh, how that felt to have the world kind of put their arms around you. Well, it was uh, bittersweet. Um, it was refreshing afterwards, after looking at it. But after coming out of NFL, I, I kind of wanted my privacy. And that was the thing from being famous, that I didn't have a chance to grieve alone. It mm-hmm. was never a moment of me and my kids by ourselves. Or it was constantly something and something. My kids' pictures being put up, something. So I appreciated, but I, I enjoyed it the four years after it kind of faded out of everything and I, I'm ben- I'm benefiting now from everything. I appreciate it now. Yeah, you know, people are just trying to, you know, right. put their arms around right. you and say we're so sorry, and we forget yeah. that what you're, go- you know, not what you're going through, but yeah, sometimes I mean we've all lost loved ones, and and when you do, you just want that yes. solitary. Everyone time. wanted to know I was okay, and every, you know, it was so refreshing. But then. It goes into the fans, and then it goes beyond the tabloids, and to wake up in the papers, and it was constant reminders. And then it will be days I'll feel good, and someone will remind me I should feel bad. Oh. So it was, <laughs> it was a constant back and forth. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so, what was the first? You know, when you kind of started shaking the cobwebs out of your head, and. Uh, How did you, what did you do? You had your your two kids at home. You had to do something. So how did you get up in the morning and what did you decide to do? The first thing I did was I ended up going to uh, enrolling in school. And uh, I wanted, I ended up going, getting back, getting my MBA in business at the University of Miami. And uh, I just needed something to preoccupy me. I knew I had a, I made some good money from football, and now I needed this money to work for me. So uh, I went to school. I wanted to learn about businesses, like starting all over again, even though I had been running business since I was 19. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but that wasn't the real business, that what, what I'm doing now. And now this is a whole new world out here, man, whole yes. new world. The good thing to hear is that you, you held on to your money. You made smart decisions while you were a player. And it allowed you to go get your MBA and and to do things right. in the business world and and not have to um, not have to sweat it because we're here yeah, too. Well, I didn't sports. always make smart. I made a lot of dumb decisions. I would say because I was not informed on. I didn't know I had the capital to invest, but not the intellectual capital. Yeah. And now I'm realizing that information is more important than anything. Mm-hmm. So, so. Let's because we don't have a ton of time. I want to talk about because it's very inspiring what you're doing with your speaking now, and uh, and you're really motivating some people and inspiring them. And you inspire me every day. I appreciate it, man. Uh, I'm doing a thing called the locker room, and I'm trying to build out this platform for men uh, where we go around, we build huddles where guys can come and uh, uh, just get stuff off their hearts, get stuff off their mind. I have another concept uh, called Broga that I've been working in, and it's just uh, yoga for men mm-hmm. and uh, just getting them there. I, I'm just coming from yoga. That's why my shirt is wet. But it's a lot of different areas that I've uh, been trying to get into. I love the locker room, the huddle idea, because guys, sometimes we don't have anybody to talk to. No. And and it's important to to be able to have peers and and other people, and is that just for athletes? Or you, no, you it's for the locker room. Is for every everywhere. It's the the the, the private place, the golf club. The, yeah, it's a, a just a healthy environment for men to really come and lay it all out on the table. Whether it's business or personal, it does not matter. It's all the same. Yeah. So, all right, we are about out of time, and I, I I want you back on, so we'll talk some more about this because I think it's very very important. But how do people reach out to Tommy Harris to find out about the locker room? Uh, Tommy Harris at Twitter, TommyHarris dot com, uh, Tommy Harris at Instagram, Tommy Harris at Facebook. Yeah, and so they can actually reach out to you, talk to you about these things, and, yes, sir, I and you can get them. You can get them locked in. There. Yes, sir. 
That's fantastic. Well, there you have it. NFL great, not only NFL great, a great human being, Mr. Tommy Harris. Thank you so much for being on the show.